We are now joined by Alistair Williamson. He is the operator of StockboardAsset.com. And Alistair, you've had a lot of your work picked up by Zero Hedge, but recently, particularly the coverage that you've been doing in American inner cities where the life and the robustness of everything is just depleting, particularly in the retail market. But your coverage in Baltimore has really been picked up since your coverage of Detroit. Tell us, what did you discover? Tell us about all the footage and everything that you found when you covered Baltimore and the depleting market of consumption in that city. Oh, and thanks for having me on. Um, uh, here in Baltimore, uh, Maryland, and you're starting to see a trend. I really think we need to start out and speak to the epicenter of where I started this, and it was Detroit. And what I came across Detroit was that the industry was gone many years ago, and I'm talking about 1960s. And when we're talking about like William Strauss and the and the generational turnings in the U.S., uh, that was the period of the American high. Remember, that's when the baby boomer, boomers were all uh, being born. We saw industry erupting, and then shortly after that, we saw globalism take hold. The elites shipping off our industry overseas. And then a depletion of the neighborhoods. What we have to understand, and we're going to go to the rhythm of what I, I picked up from Detroit to Baltimore, is that an industry would come into a town. So, for example, Detroit, automotive, the industry would be built. And then around the industry, we would have a community being built. What I saw in Detroit was a deterioration of the community because the industry was gone. Let's jump over to Baltimore. And I saw rhythm. I saw a pattern. And it's the exact same thing. Baltimore was actually one of the greatest uh, cities, not just in America, but in the world. We had steel, we had uh, aeronautics, we had all this great industry, and it's gone. And some of the end results of these industries leaving um, is economic disparities. Um, it's the retail consumption is being squashed right now. It's 16,000 vacant homes in Baltimore. Uh, it's the homicide rate. That's the real um, understanding here is that the homicide rate in Baltimore as of Friday, last Friday, just hit the highest in the country. And this is uh, this is a and kind of what I spoke about in these videos. This is a, a, a national issue that the mainstream media continues to ignore is that how the inner cities and the population in these, in these inner cities continue uh, to dwindle, not just in size, because the U.S. Census just came out the other week and said that the ba Baltimore population falls to a hundred-year low. With population decrease, you cripple the tax base, uh, and even here in the city, our police force, especially here in Baltimore, uh, it has dwindled to a size that Baltimore City, and I was at the recent hearing, is begging the federal government for. Uh, ATF, FBI, all the ABCs, they were begging the federal government to bring in forces to get the city under control. One of the items that I heard in the city hall meeting is through officials from, we'll call it the city hall, uh, from the Baltimore city officials to the police officials. And I kept hearing one rhythm, one, one pattern. Before summer, before summer. So what's happening in Baltimore is we are entering a crisis period before summer, before the, the peak homicides occur. Now, this all comes to a time where uh, the wealth income uh, disparity here between whites and blacks are is huge. And I have an article right here. This is from the Baltimore Sun. And uh, some of the medium household incomes in African-Americans in Baltimore is 33,000 compared to 62,000 in whites. Now, keep in mind, Maryland is a very liberal state, uh, as, as well as it's a very high income state as well. So, you know, why do we see these disparities? And uh, I had a great, and that video you just showed, I, I had a great interview with uh, individuals in the street. And actually where I was, was very close to Freddie Gray. Very, very close. That town, part of town is West Baltimore. Uh, I call it the triangle of death. And that's because all of these murders and homicides are happening here. Um, and and what's what's happening is that this these neighborhoods have been forgotten about for decades since globalism took the industry and sent it overseas uh, and has forgotten about these neighborhoods. And I think it's something that we really need to address. And uh, the video that you see here, um, 
there was a, an entire block of row homes that I was just stumbled across that were on fire. And I looked all around me. Did you row say on fire? Fire. You, you'll see it. You'll see it. Row home after row home, they were on fire. Now, get ready, Owen. This is, this is what the fire, not, not the firefighters, but the, uh, the owner next door who was a shop owner, he told me that he does not think that a lot of these uh, fires are started by the homeless. He thinks they're started by the city. He thinks they're started by the city. Keep in mind, Baltimore has, from a recent Washington Post article uh, from uh, Terrence McCoy, 16,000 vacant homes. That is 16 percent, or excuse me, uh, that's by Baltimore City's metric, however they measured it. But from the U.S. Census Bureau, they're saying that Baltimore could have as much as 46,000 800 vacant homes. That's 16 percent of Baltimore's housing stock. Well, and it's amazing to look at just going through these cities, cities that used to be bustling with activity, bustling with retail, bustling with consumption. I mean, honestly, I, I was looking at your drone footage. It's just like it's unbelievable for blocks. You've got homes that are collapsing. People can't even walk the streets. Homicide rates are up. And let's keep in mind, as you said, this is a city that has been led by Democrats and liberals for decades. And I'm amazing to hear you bring this point up. And it was a, an interesting point where you talk about the income inequality between uh, black people and white people. I wonder, why do you think the liberal media isn't jumping all over that narrative? Why? Because it's liberal leadership in that city that's caused it. It destroys the narrative. It doesn't fit the narrative. Let me tell you the real narrative about moving to Baltimore. The real narrative about moving to Baltimore, you won't hear this anywhere else if you're from here, is because Under Armour. We know Under Armour. And by the way, I'm going to jump to this video right here real, real quick, and then I'll come back to it. This is one of America's oldest malls that you just saw. It's a 200-year-old mall with 64 stores, vacant, completely vacant. No, no, there weren't any retail consumers there. It's incredible. But anyways, um, back to the narrative about moving to Baltimore for the past 10 years. It's been on the gentrification of Kevin Plank, of Under Armour, this, this big apparel company. You know, they're kind of like the Nikes and Adidas of the world. Uh, but what, what, what happened is that it was a gentrification narrative of moving back to Baltimore. And uh, that, is, that is what we see. But it's cracking. And what the millennials don't understand, this goes for a lot of these major cities that were very industrialized. What they don't understand is that the 50 years of rot by the, uh, the, the Democrats and the liberals and the elites and the politicians who sold out uh, these citizens, uh, the, the millennials who are moving into these cities don't understand that there's 50 years of rot. That's 50 years of uphill battles that, that the millennials moving into Baltimore and into Detroit. And you hear the narratives. And I'll tell you something very interesting. But you hear these narratives. And I thought to myself, you know, I, I hear this gentrification narrative and it's, it's great and all. But let me go a mile from where uh, this gentrification is happening. And it is Freddie Gray's neighborhood. Let me go up to Detroit where the gentrification ha is happening. Down the street, once again, it's a rhythm. You, you see the decay. Um, so it's it's quite interesting what you're well, saying. Well, and I'd like to hear it also. I mean, talk about, I'm from St. Louis. We had a similar instance. It's not as bad as Baltimore. They've actually done some revamping. But it always seems to be in the areas where there's public housing, a lot of people that are relying on, you know, um, different packages, whether it be, you know, food stamps or, or subsidized housing and stuff like that. A lot of that is around that area. Yes. And, you know, Baltimore is very interesting because I, I've been following the riots and actually that's where, uh, where, where we met in DC. And, uh, you know, that was a heck of an experience. Yeah. The Baltimore there. riots that you covered that then led to them playing a baseball game in an empty stadium. Look, the people in Baltimore, and I, I share you guys this, have been part of a system that has forgotten them since the American high. And most cities since the American high, which was 1965, Baltimore is about 1968 with the riots. Um, so with that being said, these people, the, these uh, individuals who have been forgotten and lost, uh, what, what has happened is that, um, is that they have very legitimate reasons. This is East Baltimore, this is very bad. These are entire blocks, guys, of nothing. Uh, these people have re legitimate reasons to cry out and say, help me. The system has failed me. Globalism has, they don't know what globalism is, but they, they understand that they look around their environment and see roofs that are off and no cars. And this is, this is thanks to Democrat leadership, folks. Do not be confused. Decades of Democrat leadership. Alistair Williamson from 
Stockboard Asset, thank you for joining us. Good deal. Thank you. Hey, sorry we didn't have more time, brother, but um, I'll have you back on. You were great, and you certainly don't mind talking. <laughs> I, I can I can talk for, was that nine minutes? That was nine minutes, bro. Yeah, did I? <laughs> don't worry about it. Hey, hey, look, don't worry about it. You did a great job. We covered most of the good stuff. You were a good guest, so I'll definitely have you on again, especially if you keep putting this stuff out. Yeah. That's yeah, my crew, gonna... my crew is giving you props for the amazing footage as well. Yes, it's only going to get worse, and that's why uh, I've been back and forth with Zero Hedge editors because it's going to be a trending topic. So, anyways. So, yeah, so stay in touch with me as well, and I'll keep in touch with your work as usual, bro. I got to let you go and get another guest in. Thank See you. you bro. Yep. This is one of the biggest secrets out there. The missing link of why our ancestors, whether you were in Africa or ancient Albion, which is England today, why our ancestors were so much stronger. I mean, there are huge archeological reports, all sorts of anthropology studies, you can look them up for yourself, that show that humans, just an average farmer of 10,000 years ago in England, was stronger than Olympic athletes today. In the final equation, everyone knows our modern society has lost its vitality. The sperm counts are down like 90%. People are falling apart. They're totally depressed. They're unhappy. What is going on? Every ancient culture was obsessed with what I'm about to reveal to you. Today, we call it bone broth. And for thousands of years, our ancestors enjoyed its benefits before it became lost to our modern diets of processed junk. That's why I'm so excited to announce the product that is undoubtedly the jewel in the crown of InfoWars Life products, Caveman. We lost our vitality because we just ignored the ancient traditions. Everyone knew that you used all the parts of the animal. You used the skin to cover yourself or for shelter. You used the meat for sustenance, the fat for cooking, but you used the bones for strength. We are now introducing Caveman by InfoWarsLife.com, the ultimate in true paleo nutrition with bone broth, turmeric root, chaga mushroom, and seven total primal superfoods in a single great tasting formula. The bone is so amazing. From the outside structure full of minerals and key cofactors to the marrow that produces the blood for the body, this is the engine of the life essence. I've made a lot of important points here, but this is the one you need to research for yourself because it's so key. High quality bone broth helps support healthy muscles and connective tissue, while the active compounds in turmeric do battle on the cellular level and help fight free radicals. And collagen is essential to aid healthy tendons, ligaments, and muscle tissue. This is a absolute win-win. You get an amazing product produced right here in America. You support InfoWars and all we're doing to promote freedom and the restoration of our republic and promotion of freedom worldwide. The journey towards better health and Giving our bodies these amazing compounds that God created starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Three years in the making, incredible research, and the very best ingredients. I'm Alex Jones, and I may not be a caveman, but compared to these trendies out there in the street, I'm as close as it gets. Join me at InfoWarsLife.com and get your caveman formula today.